Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, today I have an interesting integral for you. Um, I will be solving it using a combination of Feynman integration, infinite series, and complex numbers. So let's just uh, let's just get started. And there may be other ways to solve this without incorporating all of those things, but I like incorporating things like that, so we're going to do it that way. I like Feynman integration, I like infinite series, and I like complex numbers, so we're going to use all of them today. All right, so the first step is to rewrite the integral. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're just multiplying the top and the bottom of this um, this 1 over 1 plus e to the x times e to the negative x. And that's going to give us this. Um, and, and I did that um, so that our uh, infinite series would converge at a later point. So our i, our original integral i, is now equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x sine x over x times quantity 1 plus e to the negative x dx. All right, next, we're going to express... Um, we're going to express this sine x as the imaginary part of e to the ix. And substituting that in, we have that i is equal to the imaginary part of this integral right here. And then we'll notice that e to the negative x times e to the ix is just e to the negative quantity 1 minus i times x. So our integral becomes this right here. And now comes time for the reparameterization for our Feynman integration. All right, so we're going to define uh, f of t to be e to the um, the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative tx over x times one plus e to the negative x. So our original integral is just the imaginary part of our f evaluated at one minus i, as you can see. And additionally, we know that the limit as t approaches infinity of our f of t is going to give us 0. So basically, we're saying that f of uh, infinity is equal to 0. All right, next, we're going to differentiate our f of t with respect to t. Uh, using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, we just bring this uh, derivative inside as a partial derivative. And taking the partial derivative of this integrand with respect to t is just going to give you this. And we'll bring the negative sign outside. Okay, so now we have f prime of t. And we can evaluate this integral. Well, not yet. We can't, actually. We need to expand the denominator as an infinite series. And you'll note um, it's kind of it's well known um, that one over one plus e to the negative x can be expressed as the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the n times e to the negative n x. Um, that comes from the series expansion for one over one plus x, which in turn comes from the series expansion of one over. Uh, 1 minus x. Um, not too complicated there, uh, and this is going to be good on our interval, 0 to infinity. All right. So um, now we just substitute that back in for our expression for f prime of t, giving us this, and then we interchange the sum and integral, which is justified in this case. Uh, it's not going to cause any problems with convergence or anything. This integral does converge. Um, and then we just evaluate that integral. That integral evaluates to 1 over n plus t. So, substituting this back into our expression for f prime of t, we see that f prime of t is just negative sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus t. All right, but we are not interested in f prime of t. We want f of t so that we can plug in um, what we need to plug in to find the value of our original integral. So all we do is integrate with respect to t, giving us um, natural log of n plus t plus a constant. Therefore, we have this. This is our f of t. All right, so now we need to find our constant of integration. Now, uh, it's a little bit tricky and a little bit wishy-washy. 
Um, but basically, I'm just going to plug... We know that f at infinity is equal to uh, 0. So 0 is equal to this thing evaluated at infinity. Um, and then we can basically conclude that um, our c is just equal to... Um, positive this. And here's a little bit more of an expl ex explanation for that. Um, so basically our C is, um, is the positive version of this right here, which is going to be purely real, by the way. Um, and that's going to be nice since we're eventually taking the imaginary part of, um, of our, um, our integral when, or our f of t when we plug in 1 minus i. So now we just, we just evaluate um, our f of t, which we, which we found to be this thing, where this is a purely real, divergent but real term. So our i is now equal to this, and since c is real, it does not contribute to the imaginary part. So we have i is now just equal to this. And I'm not going to go through the entire process of taking the imaginary part of this natural log. It equals negative arctangent of 1 over n plus 1. Um, there, are, there are formulas you can use, or you can, just, um, you can just use the Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangents to get that. We know that um, a complex number can be written as some r, which is a magnitude times e to the i theta. Theta is the angle that's formed by the right triangle. If you um, if you use the um, the imaginary components as the y axis and the real components as the x axis, square those, add them together, take its square root. That's your magnitude, and then our theta is just going to be the arc tangent of the uh, imaginary components, which corresponds to the opposite side of a triangle, um, and the, um, the adjacent side to our angle is just going to be the magnitude of the real component. Um, so we just, we just take the arc tangent of the imaginary component over the, um, over the real component, and we see that that's going to be arc tangent of 1 over n plus 1. And that's the only part we need. We only need the imaginary part. Okay. Sorry about that. And now we have it. That's it. This is our integral. Our integral is just the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n arctangent 1 over n plus 1. And I don't believe there's any sort of special function representation for that sum. This is kind of a unique sum right here. Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that relates to any sort of uh, special function that I, that I know of. Again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But other than that, um, this is this is a fairly reasonable answer to that integral because you, you can get pretty close by just adding up maybe the first six or seven terms of this, and you'll get pretty you'll get within I think probably you know one 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 hundredth of the true answer, the true value of the original integral. So uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.